Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your hosts, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by BetOnline.ag. BetOnline is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. BetOnline continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use promo code BELIEVE for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, where the game starts. We've got a great new sponsor here at Believe in 76ers podcast. And I got to say, I love betting with my friends on pretty much anything, sports, games, you name it. And that's what the Cut app allows us to do. The Cut app is a peer-to-peer social betting platform that's legal in 40 plus states. Cut has customizable odds, tracking capabilities, and an entire social network with group chats, user profiles, and rewards. And the best part is all payments are on the app as well. No need for Venmo. So... To get started today, use our promo code BELIEVE76ERS. You can find that right there for a 10% welcome deposit bonus. And that promo code is BELIEVE76ERS, B-L-E-A-V, 76ERS. The Cut App. Put your money where your mouth is. I look forward to seeing you on the app. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash here with legendary 76ers point guard Eric Snow and my brother Tasia Dash. Guys, five game win streak. We are back, baby. We are back. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, uh, we're going to yeah. kind of break it all down in this episode. But <laughs> what do you – just seeing like kind of the um, – what we've seen the last few games, specifically, I, I think the biggest game – MB's been back, and that's been great. But I think one – the biggest game of this five game stretch is probably that Spurs game this past weekend, winning without MB. And I know we've had such a struggle with that when he was out, out. But – Winning that game on Sunday in double overtime fashion, I mean, that was such a gutsy performance. What, what did you notice from, from that game and just even seeing guys step up like Ricky Council? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, the confidence level um, has has grown, especially once, once you win, win a few games, kind of taste a little bit. Um, but I just – there was just no quit. I mean, you just kept fighting, you kept fighting. That, that game, like, totally looked – Looked like a game that we had lost in the past few weeks, um, but to win it and kind of keep your seating, you know, moving up the seating still alive. I mean, I think the urgency definitely kicked in. You could tell it kicked in, um, being able to pull that victory out. Tate, what did you notice from that that Spurs uh, Spurs comeback on uh, on Sunday? It's totally a game we would have lost like two three weeks ago, which is funny because it's the same team without Embiid, right? It's the same exact squad. Um, it just shows you when people say, like, uh, adding a guy back to the lineup can give you an energy, even if he's not playing that day. But just knowing he – it's also, I feel, a rhythm too, right? Um, I feel like we got into a rhythm with him again and a confidence level that, you know, oh, we're like, we're this good with him, but, you know, he's not even back to his full self and we're, like, really good again. And when he's not playing, it's like – we just continue on and play this way. And, and we said this for a long time. Like, these are the kind of teams we should have been beating without Embiid. And if we were while he was gone, at least like 10% more than we did, we'd have the six seed locked up by now. But, you know, it is what it is. What happened is what happened. And, um, yeah, uh, it was great um, um, to show that kind of heart. And uh, some of our complaints that we've had, or maybe more of my complaints that I've had, although Eric agreed with me on a couple of these points, uh, Maxi not ready yet to be the number one guy when the number one guy's out as of yet. He certainly did at that game. That's exactly what we've been wanting to see in Embiid's absence, right? Just like you look like the guy and be the guy, um, you know, even in short spurts in a game or two that you need it. Not, maybe not for a, a two month span. That's a lot to ask for a guy that hasn't done that before, but in, in a game or two fill in, then you should be able to do that. Yeah, I thought what was most impressive about his performance on Sunday was the fact that he scored 52 points, 
only two threes. If, if you if anyone told me Maxi scored 52 points, I would say, oh, he had like seven or eight threes. But then he was looking for other ways to score because the shot I mean, the three was not going in with two for 10 on the game and double overtime, which is only two threes in six quarters, essentially. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought that he looked for ways to score outside of the three ball, which was not falling for him, which was, I think, uh, a pr- pretty good pr- progression in his game to show that he has. There's many levels to what he can do. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to go to talking about our guy. Joel Embiid uh, in this uh, five-game win streak a little uh, further. So Sixers five-game win streak, three of those coming with Joel Embiid in the lineup. And, yes, we do have a shot at the sixth seed as as, uh, as, as chances aren't high, that high on it, but they're still there. Um, so considering Joel Embiid has missed two months and came back to a pretty revamped new roster, what are your thoughts on his play so far? Is he more or less rusty than you than you thought he would be? Um, I thought it, I thought it would be less dominant offensively. Um, you thought he'd be less dominant and less mo- yeah, less mobile defensively. Um, that part, the defensive part sh- has shown, um, the offensive part, he's been very efficient because he has, he didn't really, he's not really getting out of his circle of what he does. Um, he, he's being very efficient. He's taking the shots that are there. He's getting to his spots, being very creative. So that comfort level for him and being effective is still there because he's a great offensive player and he's getting the ball in, in good spots and spots that are good for him and he can still be effective. Um, so I, I can say that in some ways I think he's – as rusty as I kind of thought he would be. And in some ways he's, he's not um, because I, I didn't expect for him to, 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 to hit that 30 point um, threshold this soon, especially with the limited minutes that he's had that I knew he was going to have. Um, so that, that's, that's been very impressive. And, and teams are double teaming him. Like he had never left. So that's opening things up and it's going to continue to open things up. So whenever he's able to feel a little better and get get his conditioning um, up a little more, I think that's when the defensive side will, will, will take a jump as well. Yeah. And look at it. If you, if you, one thing that stood out to me, I mean, obviously 30 points in 23 minutes was great. But if you look at his three games, it looks like he's shooting the ball from the three much better than he was – before, I mean, with five of eleven from uh, from three uh, since yep. he's been back in three games, and that's that's terrific, forty five and a half percent. Then it's uh, strike contagious, forty percent three point to mark her off. So there you go. <laughs> um, it's funny too, like you said, Eric. It's it's the doubles came back right away because even though he's been gone, they just see twenty one on the court again. So like they go back to yeah. what their normal game plan is against him. They're not they're not thinking. Oh, it's MP. He's been gone for two months. I mean, maybe we should just, you know, see how this goes. Like, no, 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 no. Attack him. Get him. Like, even if he isn't 100, percent even more of a reason to double him. Make his ass make mistakes. Make him have turnovers. Make him force something. So, um, it's 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 good for us too because that's what he's going to see in the playoffs. He's going to get all kinds of new looks and doubles and flash doubles, flash triples, even sometimes. Um, so get it ready now. Get it all out of the way because I, I don't want teams to start handling him with kid gloves and then all of a sudden the playoffs the competition level jumps 10 percent you know 20 30 percent so get it ready now um he looks pretty good and this is maybe why they held him out the extra couple weeks that there were rumors that he was supposed to come be coming back at what six to eight and he came back on the later end of it um you know maybe if he came back at six We'd be looking at a couple of extra victories. Maybe we'd have the sixth seed. But you know what? In the end, I'd rather have I'd rather have the seventh seed and to have more assurances that Joel is healthy and has got his legs under him than have the sixth seed and have banged up tired Joel, if that makes sense. So I, I'm I'm glad they held him out the two extra weeks. It shows. Um, he looks health pretty healthy. The knee brace is massive, but you know, whatever. That's gonna it's gonna happen. Um 
And on top of that, it looks like overall our team's um, – sorry. Um, we just uh, – we, we need to get adjusted before the playoffs get started. But um, I love the way he looks. He looks a little frustrated sometimes. Then he doesn't have his footing. Like he punched the ground really hard in that last game because he kind of he's, he's been tripping a little bit. And I think I, my buddy asked me, our, our one of our friends who watches the games with us sometimes, said, you know, what what is it? What is he mad about? Do you think he got hurt on that play? I'm like, no, I think it's because he's pissed off that his muscle memory's not all the way there yet. He he he's taking steps that he thinks he should have his feet under him and his legs buckle a little bit, and he falls down, and he's pissed. But, I mean, you know this, Eric. That comes with playing. Like, you you can practice and do cardio all you want. You can't simulate full speed NBA game. You, you just can't unless you're just in it and playing in it, which is why it was so important for him to be playing in games down the stretch before we got to the playoffs. Yeah. That's true. Um, and his stats are great, obviously. 29.5, 8, 1.5 blocks, 53% shooting. You said it, man. Uh, he's shooting 63% from three, all in 27 minutes a night. So I expect the three-pointers to come down a little bit. I don't think he's going to keep going over 60%. But I think all of his other stats will go up, too. I think he'll be more aggressive on the boards as he gets his feet under him and more healthier. Um, and his blocks, 1.5, I can't disagree with that, right? Yeah. With, with the rust, I mean, I know three yeah. games – and obviously, just just after not playing for two months, fifteen turnovers in three games. It's kind of it's kind of a lot, right? I mean, five turnovers per game. I mean, that, that's something. That, is that is that? I mean, obviously, that comes with the double teams and the triple teams. They're throwing a lot of things at him. But I mean, is that? Would you say that's part of the rust too, Eric? Yeah, I mean, I think that any any part of the game that you kind of see a difference. Um, is, is usually from that. It's that rust because it's your rhythm isn't there. The speed of the game is different. Um, so like like they just said, it's, it's try to simulate that actual playing. It's hard to do. Even if you scrimmage with your team, it's still hard to do because the, the stoppages are different. Um, the pace is different. Um, <clears throat> you know, the competition and everything is different. So and then you the popcorn's popping. So you got people and you got audience, you have referees and 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 you have all of all of those things are different you can try to simulate that early in preseason but it's in in practice but it's really no way to simulate the game except for playing the game yeah and his best performance has been against the best team so far which is the funny thing miami he only had one turnover in that game yeah, yeah. he had 29 and one turnover I me mean, he only had four rebounds and like three assists but still i mean like he he, he was one turnover is great, plus four in the game, 32 minutes. So we might be playing them in a week from now or a little more than that. But Yeah. Yeah. Also, that was his worst rebounding performance. No, it is a play. week, right? It's a week. The play-in tournament. Let me look. Play-in tournament. I'm saying the play-in oh. starts in a week, correct? A week from today. Oh, Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, Tuesday then. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I think our last game's on Sunday, right? Damn. Yeah. April 16th. Yeah. So a week from today. So we might yes. very well be playing in either Miami or Philly in a week. Well, you know, Indiana loses a few games here to Cleveland. They lose to Toronto. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll wishful, we'll, we'll wishful thinking on my part. But you, you never know. I mean, we, we've seen Milwaukee crumble to some, some lesser teams over the last few games here. So, I mean – Crazy things can't happen. Yeah, that's that's a crazy thing. Like, I mean, Milwaukee's gave away, giving all those games up, and still the number two seed. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I have not lost a seeding at all. <laughs> Tells you how good Adrian Griffin was was before you know before he got uh, wrongfully dismissed. <laughs> he said he said he set him up nicely with that with thirty of thirteen, and then he gets. Oh, here we go. Here we, here we go. Come on now. Stop, man. Like, let's, let's stop taking shots at Doc, man. It was a good record, though. Doc aside, 30 and 13 is a good we, record. We, we, Philly, we Philly fans, we Philly fans got to move on, man. Like, we got to move on. Stop. 
Everything ain't if Doc and Ben Simmons' fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. A hey, good I never point. said Doc's name. I we just say Adrian Griffin did an amazing job. Come on, man. <laughs> And I'll tell you Doc, what, Ben Simmons and Tobias. That's all y'all talking about. <laughs> well, Tobias is still here. I mean, that, that's reasonable to talk about, I guess. I mean, ben, Ben, and Doc. so so he, that's my point. So the, Tobias probably like, man, bring, bring those two back so they can say yeah. that to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's probably saying, bring back, uh, bring back Ben. I'll tell you what. If we are the seventh spot, we do play Milwaukee. That, that Doc. Um, that's going to be a number one tweeted topic in all Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, we so, better uh, win that series then with all this talking. We, we better win that series with all this talking we doing then. Yep. You're right. You're absolutely right. More oh, pressure yeah. that series, actually. And, pl- and for the players, too, with all, all the, the subtle shots they took about how there was actually movement in the offense, all, all the stuff they said about how things weren't happening when Doc was here. So mm-hmm. it's pressure on the players, too. All right, so um, we're heading down to the last three games of the yep. season. Sixers can be anything from a six to eight seed and can play any number of different teams depending on their seeding, Milwaukee, Doc, uh, Orlando, New York Knicks, Cleveland, and Boston. So question for you guys, what is your best case and worst case scenario for your playoff uh, scenario matchups? Um, I think, I think for us, where we are right now, I don't, I don't think, I think eight is not good for us, even though it takes away a lot of pressure. I I just don't see that eight being the best out of the situation. I think six or seven, I don't think the, the spot matters more than the matchup. Um, I think if we have a Joel that can play a full series, um, there may be a lot of people out there that will pick us if we play the Cavaliers or Orlando. Um, oh, yeah. That we, we'll probably get picked. Milwaukee, even the way they're playing, I'm not sure people will pick us in the series, but there may be some people out there that would pick us. Yep. Um, but I think if we can somehow at six or seven match up with Cleveland or Orlando, Most people will pick us to win a series. So I, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's the seed as much as it is the matchup. Do I think we can beat Boston? Yeah. Have we beaten Boston? No. <laughs> so tough one. I'd say the worst case scenario. Obviously, not not counting missing the playoffs altogether. If we lose both playing games, not counting that. Um, uh, we lose a seven eight matchup, and then win the eight nine and play Boston round one. Best case scenario would be move to the six seed. It's not necessarily the most realistic one. I think to stay at seven, which is the most realistic, and then get to play. I think Orlando in the first round. Um, and then to play either New York or Cleveland in the second round, I think would be the most ideal re- road to get to Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, I think we get very, I wouldn't say lucky because they're all, you know, they're good teams here. I'm not going to say they're, they're, they're all, you know, rollovers, but that would be preferable for me at least. Um, I know Milwaukee doesn't look good right now, but come playoff time in a series, I wouldn't want to bet against Giannis and Lillard for, for seven games. And especially if they win a, for the first round series, they're, they're going to have momentum at that point. They already won one. They think they can do it at that point. So I definitely wouldn't want to play them in the second round after they just won in the first round. Um, so although it would be, again, to go back to this, it would be, who would be funny to play Doc in a second round series because that was the knock in Philly, couldn't do back the second round. So to, for him to beat us to get past the second round would be sweet justice for Doc. Uh, good for him. Um, not for us. It would be terrible for him. It would be the opposite for us. It would be a <laughs> nightmare. Um, but, yeah, that's overall uh, my – and it's going to be interesting, man, that the final stretch of games for these teams, those teams, I mean, I think – I had to pull up standings, but – 
Milwaukee has a one-game lead, I believe, over Orlando Knicks, and I think one and a half over Cleveland. Um, and they play Orlando twice. The the Bucks too. So if if they lose to the Celtics tonight, I think they're deadlocked with Orlando, and they play them twice to end the season. So oh, that's pretty really. Much, that's pretty much like a play-in game to get the second seed at that point. Uh, that's that's we play them twice too. I don't know what the series is right now between them, but if they split, I don't know what that would mean. But yeah, that's pretty tough. Milwaukee's got a tough road uh, the, these next uh, few games. Um, I think Knicks and Cleveland all have tough, pretty tough schedules from here on out. So they all have tough. And we play Orlando. So Orlando plays the Bucks twice and plays us. So not easy for Orlando by any means. So it'll be – those last few games are going to be really fun to watch. They're pretty much, so, you know, playoff games. I mean, depending on how badly you want some of these seeds. And, I mean, if you – Eric, if you were one of these teams, would you want to play – would you be looking at this, uh, the second seed going, I don't want to play Philly in the first round? I, I think you have to try to put yourself in position to get home court advantage as much as possible. I mean, I, I think that's what you have to think. And you also have to think from a standpoint of if you make the finals, do you have home court advantage? So winning games, you also got to look at what the other conference is doing. And true. Because that conference could be one through – right now, one through 10 could go through the finals. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> it does matter. Winning those games down the stretch, like I said, I, I said, told y'all before that uh, I know I said it maybe a year or so ago when we were talking about when we went to the finals against the Lakers, we ended up having the tie record, but we had we were one game up. They won their last game. We lost our last game because guys didn't play, and nobody thought it mattered because the Spurs had the better record, but the Lakers were second. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lakers ended up beating the Spurs. Ended up getting home court because of you know really that one that last game that we would have played a team that if everybody would have played we would have won. Um, so it was it was it was interesting that you know I don't think I know I hadn't paid attention to that before that moment. Did you guys realize it after you lost, or did you realize it when you finally had to play the Lakers and be like shit we could have had home court? When the Lakers beat the Spurs, then it became a, a topic because they were like, the Lakers will still have home court advantage in the finals. And you guys didn't know that going into that game. You didn't even realize it? No, 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 no. We we, we, we knew that um, Billy King had a conversation with me about it. Uh-huh. So I played knowing that. So I thought other people would play. Then some guys were like, didn't think that the Lakers were going to beat the Spurs. Wow. That's what it came down to. Wow. Huh. Interesting. And they ended up sweeping them. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, because they, they didn't they didn't lose a game until to, to you guys. Yeah. To us. Until game one. Yeah. I think you guys I think you guys played all but two of the po- most possible games you could play or one leading into that. And they played the least amount of games needed to get there. Yeah. Right. It was like a contrast we between played, the most you had to yes. play and the least you had to play. Wow. <laughs> we played four, four out of five, seven and seven. Yes. Yep. Damn. Yep. For a team that needed, you guys need rest if anything, man. So for a team that needed rest, you guys had to, fight and claw and scratch your way to the finals to get there. How long, how long were they uh, resting after they won their, their last years um, while you guys were playing? How many, how many days of rest did they get while you guys were still playing and they were done with their, their Western conference final series? Um, so we, we played three extra games. We didn't play back to backs. Um, there um and then it was probably another three to four five days in between that the conference finals and the finals because i know we had an off day and then we didn't leave until maybe the next day and we got there like two days before the first game so it was at least three to four days in between that first game damn damn 
So, yeah, it's it's crucial once you get into the playoffs to win as fast as possible. Don't try to let the teams hang around. So, I mean, that's there, there's a reason right there, especially with Embiid's injury, too. We want to end this play-in tournament real fast. We don't get the sixth seed and then try to win our first round as fast as possible. Those days of rest are crucial for that knee. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go to our final topic here. So tonight, the Sixers will host the Detroit Pistons. Sixers are currently a 15-and-a-half point favorite at home. Um, and I assume they're going to have everyone tonight. I was looking at the betting lines there. They don't have everybody listed. The only guy they have listed for points and blocks and rebounds is Embiid and nobody else on our squad. So I guess they're still waiting to see if everyone's going to play. Um, but 15-and-a-half point favorite at home. What do you guys have? Um, and a game like this, um, how much of this are we going to be looking at Embiid's conditioning um, and, and, and the team's rhythm as they learn to play together versus wins and losses when you play a team like the Detroit Pistons? Well, I mean, you got to win the game, and I think you want to win it, and you want to win it from the start. You don't want this team to hang around and then all of a sudden start making games, make, making shots later as the game goes on. So I expect the intensity to be tough and then and, um, on the high level from the beginning of the game, um, working on things you need to work on because your focus is different. Um, you know, working on your team, working on your defense, working on your cohesiveness and making sure that we're doing what we need to do to get ready for the next for the playoffs, because um, where we're trying to go and where we're trying to end up has to be di- totally different from where this where this team is. So we got to jump on it from the beginning. So I, I, I say we win it and we cover. Real fast before I do that, Lakers had nine days of rest before that game one against you guys. Yeah, there you go. No, I said no. I knew it was a, you had at least a week, and then it was like th- another three days before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was something like that. Damn. Crazy. And you guys had two days of rest before that, <laughs> which may have helped you guys a little bit because you had the rhythm. You were going, 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 and they had to kind of get back into like cutthroat mode again. Yeah, no, I don't really. That that's overrated. I mean, <laughs> is it? They play. They, it's, I would, I would have taken, I would have taken the rest. I would have taken the nine days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with your injuries, I bet you would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, it's crazy, man. That's a long time. So you don't believe in the whole like two minute, too much time off? Nah, nope, nope. <laughs> Get right. Yeah. No. Um, Guys do all star breaks. They have three or four days off in between games all the time. Like, no, I don't believe. Uh, tonight's game. So obviously, we want to win, um, but there is a lot going on outside of the win loss column. Uh, rotations, minutes, who's going to make it into the short rotation in the playoffs? I actually had a question about that, Eric. So, how hard is it for a coaching staff to like shore up the? playoff rotation when you really haven't had a full access to like the current version of this team, right? Because we've been missing Harris. Roko has been out for months. Melton's been out for pretty much most of the season at this point. And Bede's been out for two months. We added a bunch of new players to the team. So they might not ever get to see the full allotment of players before the playoff even starts together. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's going to be tough. I, I think the coach has an idea. Um, the the question is who you who are you going to have? Like, is Melton coming back? Like, we don't know. Um, and if he's not, I mean, I think you 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 pretty much know your group. You have your your top seven eight guys that you have now, and with Joel, you got to figure out the thing. You got to figure out is. Who is your is your seven and your eight or nine? Is it the same with or without Joel? That's what you have. You have to answer that question because you we kind of kind of know. We probably know Obama may not play as much if Joel is playing, but if he's not, then all of a sudden his minutes go up. So I, I think that you have your six or seven guys 
that's with Joel or without Joel. And eight, nine, ten may fluctuate. Like they may change. Um, depending on the game, depending on the matchup, depending on who you plan. Um, if if we're playing Milwaukee, you may need an extra Paul Reed may play more because of you may need an extra big. Yeah. Um, if we play you Miami Boston, in that, game. that that need may not be there as much. And like we're Miami, like that need may not be there as much. Miami's a better, you know what I'm saying? We play somebody like that. You play the Pacers, you know, the, that need changes. So I think it also depends on, you know, the coaches having their feel and that group and which group is going to help them win, but it also depends on who they're playing. What, what did you make of um, Ricky Council's play on Sunday? This is a guy who we've seen flashes of him, like, look good, and then he comes out and makes some great plays on Sunday. Do, do you think – and the crazy thing was, I don't think he played till the fourth quarter of that game. It was like they're putting him in there to, th- to throw somebody else at them, and he looked great. Do, do you think a guy like that could crack the lineup, or is he more of a guy they, they maybe see like a future with him, not so much this year kind of thing? I mean, he 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 he's possible. He kind of reminds me of our Raja Bell. It's like if if the, the, when the opportunity comes, he's ready to step in and and, and make things happen. Um, so I don't think he's a he'll be a guy that's a lock for that rotation. But I think that he's a guy that they're confident enough that if they needed to go that direction, that they would. Yeah. Yeah, he looks fearless out there. And the moment well, it was a big game. It was a big game and a big moment, and it wasn't too big at all for him. He looked ready for it. Yeah, that pass to Batum in the corner was was nasty. That was yeah. that was a veteran play right there. And I might venture to say that pass, the inbounds pass from Batum, might have been one of our plays of the year. That was that was ridiculous. That was precision, man. And, and that's the players have been talking about the Nick Nurse play design right there. <laughs> we, fi- we finally saw the Nick Nurse play designs there, Eric. <laughs> yeah. um, just a quick thought here. You, you mentioned Melton. Uh, Melton is questionable for t- tonight's game. Uh, Robert Covington's ruled out for tonight's game. Kyle Larry questionable. Tobias Harris questionable. Maxi questionable. Um, and yeah, so Melton being listed as questionable, that's a that's a positive sign that he could be coming back soon if they're if they're listing him as questionable instead of just a, a an out designation. So. Yeah. So some positivity going uh, in. Right. We'll see. Hopefully it gets in there. While I like that, the last time he was questionable and came back, he re-injured his back again. It was out another a month and a half. So like I, I I want him to get right, not just like hurry him back at this point. If another week before the playing game does him good, I would say just yeah, but hopefully that's what he's been doing. I'm just saying, but yeah. Hopefully, him being out—that's what he's been doing—is getting right. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> if he does yeah. come back, you know, he's he's set up the proper amount of time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. All right, fellas. Well, that was a good episode. We'll uh, see you guys next week as we preview maybe the playing game or maybe preview our th- the six-three matchup uh, next Tuesday when we uh, kind of reconvene for uh, the playoff stretch run here, guys. Guys, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, All right guys. See you, fellas. All right, take it easy.